Hey, let's just sit in. I know somebody. Somebody I've never talked about. Ambulance rides. And not licensed. Oh. How I got ripped off. The poor thing. It was, um, was it Steve Wakelin? Hmm. Did you know that? I have a, was it Steve Wakelin? I wish you want more than three dogs. Yes, we learned that. I know somebody that's got five exactly. kids and six dogs. Hypothetical question. Like, really? What kills me are people calling them family members. Hmm? Everybody oh, ready? Oh, it's not easy. Hmm. I'm ready. Great. And spending millions of dollars on the real estate. Welcome, everybody, to the March 25th Finance Committee meeting. Tonight we have Social Robotech and a reserve fund transfer on the agenda. Come on up. There's no chairs for you, but come on up. Well, uh -oh. I won't let it be, but I'll bring a chair. <laughs> yeah, bring a chair with you. Do you want to bring everybody with you? Hey, buddy. Your call. Do you want to join or do you want to stay? Okay. That's, that's all right. No worries. Hi there. <laughs> Have you met everybody? You have several, several, several new faces. Uh, Go around. If you don't know. Uh, Lady Susanellis. I'm Hickey, superintendent. Great to meet you. Hi there. Jim Coughlin, treasurer. Sean Tyler. Barbara Ray. Hello, Barbara. Chad Lovett. Pete Walters. And Cindy White. Cindy. Cindy. Hello. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Uh, this is, I think, the fourth time, maybe the fifth time, that I've been able to come out and uh, unpack for you with some. Uh, portions of our uh, our fiscal 16 budget so I've got a handout I can give to you and uh, there you go. Thanks Jim. Got a few more here. Oh. Straight in here. There we go. Everyone's covered there. Great. Great. I, uh, these are great. Where were these made? I wonder. Yeah. It was a very short commute. Actually, our business office folks take great pride in this. I, uh, I'd encourage you uh, to please uh, feel free to look through whatever documents interest you the most. I'll do a quick walkthrough, and I'll probably focus most of my attention on the budget presentation, which is the color PowerPoint slides at the beginning. But please, don't. like I said, you can listen and peruse whatever you'd like. I, I promise I won't walk you through every single page. So what I'm giving you tonight is a copy of the budget presentation that I uh, made to the school committee on January 21st. And in this presentation, you'll see the headliners that are going into a, a fiscal 16 proposed budget increase of 3.25%. That number uh, is the overall uh, budget increase. The, uh, the total assessment increase for the town of Abington, we're coming here tonight, is 0.75%. So the two, the two numbers, obviously, the first number I present is the overall increase in total dollars. And then as of March 4th, where we got the, uh, the governor's minimum aid numbers and such, we were able to project based on uh, Chapter 70 money and also estimates on regional transportation that the preliminary assessment that we're sending to the towns has Abington with an increase of 0.75%. So that PowerPoint presentation shows you some of the highlights of what we're going to try to do in the next 12 months in terms of facilities and curriculum and personnel. The next stapled packet will show you just some enrollment trends. Uh, there's a, uh, as of the last October 1 report, 148 students from Abington. And then we, uh, we show you the enrollments of other towns comparatively a one-year breakdown and then uh, a total student enrollment of 599 students, uh, which is the very last slide. These are the same kinds of slides we've shared with the Finance Committee in the past. And then the last loose piece of paper in the, in the binder we also want to share with our, our respective Finance Committees. Uh, built into this budget are costs not typically associated with a, uh, a school district being a region, a municipality, an entity onto our own. Uh, we're responsible for insurance, unemployment, uh, payroll taxes, something called snow removal, and, uh, and debt service. The debt service is the, uh, the roof and window project we had done in 2011, so we're, we're continuing to, uh, to pay that off. That's what the debt service refers to. The rest of the spiral bound uh, document is similar to what we've provided in the past and it shows a breakdown of all the major cost center areas. I'd welcome questions uh, certainly tonight or Chad after this if necessary, uh, if giving you time to digest it. But in terms of the overall, the overall direction of where we're going, I'll, uh, I'll just cherry pick a few things from the, the presentation. 
Uh, one of the things that we're trying to accomplish in this budget is to address some of the uh, recommendations we received as a result of our NEASC accreditation visit in 2013. So we have uh, a planned construction project next year of uh, having our students build a maintenance building in the back of the school. And what that will accomplish is it will help us address some of the storage needs that we have in our vocational areas and also for our maintenance department. We were able to uh, establish a stabilization <coughs> fund uh, last spring uh, with, with your support as well. And so one portion of the budget tonight that I'll, uh, that's highlighted in the presentation is that uh, I see down the road a need for us to replace <coughs> some rooftop units on the, on the 1992 portion of our building. The original building is 1962. And then the addition that was built in 1992, we've got four rooftop units that were manufactured in 1989, and we're, we're told they had a 15-year shelf life. Uh, they are not in crisis, and our goal is to never have to respond in a, in a crisis mode. So what I recommended to the school committee was that we, uh, we make a, uh, an initial uh, deposit into the stabilization account of $40,000 uh, to prepare for what will eventually be a replacement of those rooftop units. There's a modest investment in, uh, in our OPEB account of $25,000. Again, those are, those are our responsibilities as a municipality. I'd, I would be remiss if I didn't point out to you that uh, along with, along with our crafting the budget for next year, I'm also very pleased with the fact that we were able to enter into an agreement with the town of Situate to purchase some surplus uh, solar energy at nine cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, this net metering credit agreement has allowed, it will, will help us realize a savings in this year, and we all, saw our, we all saw our electric bills at home go up. Uh, the rates have changed, certainly. And this has also helped to offset uh, those, those adjustments that will likely be felt next year. So I'm very pleased with that. Jim has provided the school committee with monthly reports on that. Uh, so along with being more aggressive with, uh, with grants, uh, we secured a $133,000 Mass Life Sciences grant for our electronic shop. Uh, again, this has a positive impact on, on uh, my being able to not uh, need to rely on operational budget costs for some of the supplies. It's, it's a one-time investment, certainly we're thrilled to have it. Uh, but I feel good that where I'm in a position now where uh, I can rely on some uh, federal entitlement grants, uh, what's called a Perkins grant, where uh, we're, we're afforded uh, money every year that I can invest in vocational equipment, which is why in this operating budget, you're not going to see many requests for big ticket vocational equipment items. For me, this, the, this budget here allows me to maintain, uh, maintain the instructional core of the building while making some investments in capital. On the, if I were to, if I were to direct your attention to the fourth page in, I'll just summarize what I said on that, it's on the chart uh, called headliners, and I'll just highlight a couple more things. And I'll just follow the order here. So, so the first item on this headliner list that I haven't talked about, which is significant, but it has no budgetary impact, is that we were accepted into the MSBA's accelerated repair program uh, to replace our boiler. I was at the MSBA earlier today where I made sure that they voted for it, and once they did, I was able to get up and go, and uh, they, they certainly were very supportive. So we stand to have reimbursed 54.16% of an estimated boiler project cost uh, of, uh, of about 663000 So uh, what, what our committee's plan will be now that the board has voted on this is that at our next school committee meeting, we will, we will use money from our excess and deficiency account uh, to pay our share of the boiler. So there will be no, it's a big ticket item, you deserve to know that. Uh, but we also felt, I felt very strongly that if we have the means to absorb the cost, uh, that this is a good time to do that. So we will get a new boiler, it will be replaced hopefully in the late summer, early fall. We will uh, start the project uh, we, and finish the project hopefully no later than, uh, than, than October. And the MSBA will begin to reimburse us on a monthly basis. So we will vote that at our April meeting. And uh, again, there is no impact to our 
fiscal 15 budget or fiscal 16 budget. Uh, there have to be, uh, we'll take a series of uh, motions to move money from the savings account into the operating budget, then we'll encumber the money to use for this project. So I'm very pleased that we're able to not have to bring you increased assessments to cover the, the cost of the boiler. So I mentioned that. The second item I mentioned about the maintenance building, uh, there is money in this budget for, this, for the supplies and materials for this uh, building. I've got a few visuals in this presentation which will show you approximately where it's located. The end result will be a three-bay garage for our maintenance department to store our vehicles as well as streamline all of our maintenance storage. Uh, for personnel, I have one personnel request I brought to the school committee and that was for a, uh, an aid, a paraprofessional. Um, I'm seeing a, a, uh, seeing a significant increase in student interest in our metal fabrication and welding program. Uh, as well as sustained interest in our HVAC program, which has a very strong off-campus component. Uh, so the, the personnel request, uh, I'll be looking next year for someone who has uh, a technical background uh, with some welding uh, skills who could come in and support the teachers in both programs. This would allow us to, uh, if, if, as student, if student interest continues the way it's going, it will allow us to uh, take more students in, into the programs. So that's the only personnel request that's in this year's budget. I mentioned about OPEB. I mentioned about the stabilization fund. Uh, we're also, uh, we've been staggering the purchase of school buses uh, to, a, to every other year. So we, uh, this would be a year for us to uh, secure a new school bus. And I'm also uh, looking as a capital expense to, uh, to outfit into all of our buses a, uh, a, a bus GPS and maintenance tracking system. Uh, we hope to have, uh, we hope that we will know some accurate uh, health insurance numbers uh, with the Mayflower Group uh, by early next month, and uh, where we have an estimate of a 5% increase uh, built into the budget for health insurance for next year. On the next page, uh, I chunk for you out of the budget the capital requests. Uh, this is important because capital is, uh, you know, is, is a, is, there's a set formula for how capital is dispersed between the towns. And so those are all of the capital items, many of which I've already mentioned. There are a few others, uh, including a, a Chromebook cart for the English department. Below that is the visual I mentioned to you earlier regarding the uh, maintenance building. And uh, it's a busy slide, but there's a, there's a lot going on here. So you're looking at the school. At the lower part of the picture is Webster Street, Route 123. The back of our school, you'll notice there's a, I have outlined in yellow, a, a purple rectangle in the center of the slide. That's where the maintenance building is going to go. It's going to be built in close proximity to an existing barn that we have. We will be pouring the foundation for this uh, building in May. And then the grassy area that's in front of that is uh, an old leaching field and we will, in mid to late June, we will be removing that, repaving it, and we'll be able to get uh, realize some additional <coughs> parking there. So next school year, students in our carpentry, electrical, and HVAC programs will be <coughs> constructing this building. I have $190,000 for, uh, for materials for this project. <coughs> The uh, architect we've been working with on this project said that if this had gone out to a, a public bid with prevailing wage, it would have been in the vicinity of $450,000. So I'm thrilled to know that we have the expertise, uh, and, and it's not a crisis, and it's not a sense of urgency. We can take the school year, certainly, to do it, but that's our plan for those, for those kids for next year. On the next page is, a, is a, a better detailed visual of what the building will look like and again where it's going to be located on the, um, on the campus. The next slide I talk about a boiler update which I've already provided to you. Uh, I also told the school committee about some curriculum resources. Uh, I feel very good about the resources that we have. We're keeping our textbooks current. We're keeping our vocational equipment and supplies current. And, our, and, and technology in all of our classrooms current. So uh, while there was less operating uh, money and more money in capital than last year, because we have a zero-based budget approach, I was able to move money around in order to accommodate some of the larger capital items. On the next page, I, uh, I've already mentioned to you about the personnel, the technical aid. And on the slide below is where uh, I excerpted out of our long-range facilities plan some of the facility updates we'll be undertaking for next year. Again, some of these I've, I've talked about, but uh, there's no detail too small when it, when it comes to maintaining a building 
Uh, again, the, the, the bulk of the building built in 1962. Very, very pleased with the condition of the building. Uh, as you can see, some of the, some of the items I've mentioned, but we've, uh, we've been continuing to renovate. Many of these things I even mentioned to you last year when I was here, renovating classrooms in the 1962 building, some camera upgrades, some painting and whatnot. Uh, so that it so that if we stay on a regular maintenance plan it's never it's never too overwhelming for staff to uh, to keep the building maintained that's essentially the overview of the budget and the the, the major parts of the budget uh, the the last phase of my presentation to the committee involved enrollment trends the, that page speaks for itself you had a chance to look at some other trends the next page shows you uh, a multi-year trend in terms of uh, student interest from 2006 to the present I went on to tell the committee back in December and January uh, that Chapter 78 is essential. Our Chapter 78 for the last three years has essentially been has been flat. I'm pleased to see that we're going to we're going to see an increase in our Chapter 78 for next year. That's what we're basing the assessments on. So uh, that's that was uh, good news. Good news for us, and it's not something we've seen in a while. More Chapter 78 obviously helps to contribute to uh, lower assessments for the communities. I also added a couple of slides this year, which you may find interesting, uh, or at least just a, a reference for the future. Uh, the next page, uh, in an effort to help break down what goes into an assessment, uh, there are really five factors that go into an assessment so that when you're looking at that bottom line number, the, this year Jim sent you a page that showed the comparison between last year and uh, next, this year and next year, and, uh, and also showed you a, a page that broke down that number into the categories you see here. So the first category is the minimum contribution. This is the number driven by the state formula. That's approximately 70% of a town's assessment. It's a town's ability to pay, looking at real estate values and income, as well as other factors. This is the portion that we don't have any control over. Uh, that doesn't mean we wash our hands of it. I mean, we build a budget every year. But when the state is determining the minimum number of dollars that the town and the state should be paying for public education, that's the term they use. And if you were to visit the DESE website and, and, and go to the Chapter 70 section of the DESE website, you would find these descriptions and these spreadsheets broken out. The other items that are on here are driven, are driven by the regional agreement in terms of how we assess. So capital is a separate number built into the assessment. Operating costs, which are our transportation and cafeteria costs, minus any expected reimbursement from the state. Uh, debt service uh, is obviously, uh, as I said, for the roof and window project. And then other costs that are above the minimum contribution. So I thought it was important to be able to spell out for our member communities uh, that between the minimum contribution based on the state formula and our regional agreement, this slide and then the one below it will just help you get a little more information in terms of where they get that number from. How did they? How, how did it get to be that amount? Many of these items are based on enrollment, and I won't read the slides to you. But I wanted to say to you specifically that if if uh, so, for instance, in capital, there's a capital number four hundred nineteen thousand five hundred dollars. On the bottom slide, it says that based based on a three year rolling average of Abington enrollment, that means Abington's share of the capital would be 25.41%. So again, that, that may nothing may jump off the page. The larger the percent generally suggests a larger student enrollment, and those numbers have been pretty, pretty stable over the last several years in terms of proportion uh, to overall in-district student enrollment. But this is something I would bring back to you uh, on a regular basis so that you have a, a little more of a reference in terms of where some of these numbers are coming from. Okay. So that's, uh, that's our story in a nutshell for fiscal 16. Um, I'd be more than happy, Chad, to answer any questions or uh, drill in deeper to some of the other documents. I want to start with a couple of questions on the stuff you just went through. The boiler. Yes. You have, what's the fund that it's coming from? Yeah, it's, an, it's called excess and deficiency. So regional school districts are allowed to, it's, it's the, I guess I would make it synonymous with, uh, with free cash. So we, regional districts are allowed to keep 5% of the previous year's budget f for emergencies. Okay. And so uh, while this is not a crisis where the boiler has broken, it's a perfectly legitimate expense. 
and so there are there are regulations for regional school uh, districts where you need a two-thirds vote to move the money in but the name of the account is the excess and deficiency account so that's in addition to the fund that was voted on last year that's correct so this it's like two funds like two rainy day funds kind of that's right this the stabilization fund the deposits that would be made into that fund uh, would have to be uh, that would have to be for a specific purpose. So we may have we may have money. Our our E and D account, Jim, right now is a, a little bit shy of five percent. Right. A little under five percent. It's about five hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. Right. So we're going so our, our goal is to use those funds. The stabilization fund, by definition, uh, is a fund that we're going to be putting money into for a specific purpose. So unlike an E and D account where we couldn't necessarily say what exactly could happen that we would use the money for. We're not, we don't put money into a stabilization account for what we will see. You put it in for rooftop units. You put it in for rooftop units. You, you, put it in, you put it in because maybe we want to do a feasibility study on something five years down the road, but you name it and you, and you plan for it. But, but it is a, it is a, separate, it's a separate vehicle for us to be able to, to plan. My, the way I look at it is it's an opportunity to prevent assessment spikes and not have to come and say in one year, oh, those rooftop units, we're gonna have to go out to bid, it's gonna be 500,000. And then I'm forced to make a decision where while you would be sympathetic, you wouldn't wanna hear me say, I need all this, plus I need, I have instructional needs and everybody has needs. This allows me to kind of level that off a bit. That's my goal. I would probably be continuing on that path. Uh, my thought, Chad, is that uh, until my facility director says, oh, we, we really need to get on this, I would probably continue to make methodical uh, uh, requests for deposits into that account uh, until we can get to a point that we can replace them. So once that account hits five percent, then the remainder, if it's at, if you have six percent left over at the end of the year, the the one percent gets divided up among the towns based on the assessments. If there is money at the end of a fiscal year beyond the five percent, the school committee can reallocate and spend on things that we needed in that fiscal year or it can be returned to the town. So last year the committee voted to return $55,000. I think Abington's share might have been around $14,000. So the, the, assessment number, the assessment number at town meeting and the assessment number that we ended up scrubbing down I think was about $14,000 about $14, less. So in the last few years we have, we have sent, uh, sent money back. Uh, that's again. That's a year-to-year -year, uh, item, but that's essentially how the committee operates. The the bus. There's a number in there for twenty thousand for the bus for the GPS and maintenance. Is that per bus or all the buses? All the buses. So we have we have uh, we have a fleet right now of thirteen buses, and so the that that is an estimate that would put the, the that would put this on all the buses we have. Two more. The Chromebook. Yeah. Ninety five hundred bucks. How many Chromebooks is it? It's what, a, what is it, I guess? Uh, well, the, the Chromebook is, uh, is, is the Google version of a laptop. So for classes that are really using it for word processing and not loading it down with, uh, with, with software, like, you know, we wouldn't use Chromebooks in drafting with AutoCAD and wouldn't SolidWorks. Work. Wouldn't work, absolutely. Uh, but that also that's all, also includes the cost of a cart. I think there's 25, could okay. be 20 to 25. That's enough for the class. That's right. So we're at a point now where we're able to, we, we have a series of mobile computer cards. Some are traditional Lenovo laptops and some are, are, are Chromebooks, uh, depending really on what the, uh, what the departments need. So our auto body, for instance, our auto body program uses laptops because they load onto the laptop a special software to train kids on estimating jobs. The English department does not need that. And so it's a little bit cheaper uh, going that route. Then my last one, I noticed in here, the um, presentation you mentioned on the maintenance building that all the different shops are going to be involved in that. Yeah. It seems like drafting was excluded. There was an architect on that? Yeah. Yeah. Drafting is, drafting is very busy, Chad. <laughs> drafting is very busy. They are building, a, they're designing a bandstand. All right. Just thought they were capable of that. Oh, I, that's not to say they're not capable. You tried up on that, Jim. Yeah. Of course I did. Yeah. yeah. It's a great shop. That's all I have. Who was next? You or Sean? Barbara can go. Um, so you would you would expect that stabilization fund to go over the five percent of your Just budget, Barbara? I'll separate the two. So the stabilization fund. Uh, no, I understand. So what I'm asking though is, the E and D account can only reach five percent. That's correct. The stabilization account can reach. The stable, there is actually, I, I'd have to look back at the statute, Barbara, there, there is a limit. There is a, it's written into the statute what the limit is. It is, uh, 
I'd have to check. It's a, it's an insanely high number that, that we would never. I mean, they're talking <coughs> in the millions of dollars by by statute. But so you would. There is no connection between the no. E and D five percent and the stabilization. But you would expect to have more than five percent. In other words, it's a moot point, but um, the E and D account can hold five percent. Yes. Of the budget you would expect to be able to put more than 5% into the stabilization account at any? No, no, I, I, at this point, the stabilization account right now has zero dollars in it. it. It was just created last spring. So with this proposal, we would put 40,000 in and there would be 40,000 in uh, that, that fund as of the start of uh, fiscal you, 16. But So you couldn't use that from the E&D account? Moving money from E and D into stabilization? No, you couldn't use the for rooftop whatever rooftop units. For rooftop units. Oh yes, we could. We absolutely could. What I'm looking at is if I have a if I have an E and D account right now that is five hundred and fifty thousand, and I'm going to commit uh, if if our share of the boiler project is in the ballpark pre bid, just the estimates to MSBA of about three hundred and ten thousand. Now I'm looking at an E and D account that will be depleted. It will it will take us it would take us a while I would project before we would have an E and D certification back up at, at the level that Jim is talking about. That was my next question. Yeah. How long does it take the E and D account to get to? How long is it? It it really depends to get on to that five hundred and fifty five hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> it takes a while because every yeah. year we do the um, <clears throat> you know we close the books we have a surplus deficit however it comes out to be, and then. The school committee votes, and last year they voted to take fifty-five thousand and give it back to the towns. Um, and I believe our surplus might have been ninety-nine thousand dollars. So, and with that, and we have the state auditors come out and they do all their certifications and so forth, and um, certify the E and D number. Right. And we were below because um, again we can take five percent of the next year's budget into the process. So, you know, when we close the books this June, uh, the, this budget's a little over twelve million. So our E and D ceiling will be like six hundred thousand dollars. And um, you know we do that calculation, sort of like a uh, retained earnings in the business world, and so forth, where we can only keep that much money in there. If there, if for some reason there is a surplus at the school at the end of the fiscal year, the school committee then has to make a decision as far as what to do with that surplus, <coughs> give it back to the towns, um, and, and you know, do some other funding such as OPEB or, or whatever. But um, you know, we the plan is to come out and, and use three hundred thousand, three hundred eight thousand of our E and D to pay for the boiler. Not ask for the town to, to you know, handle that, that number. In, so in, we don't know how to. I mean, at some point, it, it, it takes years to get up to that point, and it just depends depends upon the um, you know the, every year with the the way that the, the numbers um, come down to. So in your scenario, Barbara, if we had an issue with those units at a cost that exceeded what was in stabilization, yes, we could we could use that. It's just that we're we'll be entering a bit of a cycle where there'll be less than than that. Okay. And then this was just a curiosity question. Um, replacement of wireless switches throughout the building. What are wireless switches? So we don't. Wires. I, <laughs> oh. From the drafting guy. Yeah, how about that? Uh, <laughs> to prevent dead zones uh, so that when we do have uh, students that are trying to log on to the net, okay. yeah, it's Wi Fi. Thank you. One of the few times I'll actually offer it. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. That's it for me. Sure. You're welcome. Um, two, two seconds, and I apologize for that. I think each year that you've come, you've had to suffer fools of my question. So I don't think so. It, it's, it's much the same for this year. I apologize. The education business, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Oh, I didn't say that we're going to offer you stupid questions. I said suffering <laughs> fools. There'll be a bigger difference. Um, so as we relate to the excess and, and deficiency account, these are parts that I struggle with, quite honestly, as we look to struggle through this particular budget and, and the town manager um, goes through a rigor with the rest of the town department as we look to streamline and shave down as close to possible the bone, understanding that good fiscal policy will allow for similar uh, in for certification of free cash for the municipality, but yet we push that to the limits um, quite often. Um, Barbara asked a handful of good questions as it relates to kind of the percent contribution each year, year over year. You're at currently at 562. I, I love the, the budget presentation. That's great, but I'd honestly love to see a balance sheet. I'd love to see the year over year comparison of that E and D. I would equally like to see, or at least learn of what that policy is for use of funds. Um, 
albeit you guys do superlative work. Our chairman clearly has testimony to that, as well as his appreciation for the work that you've done. Um, yet, it still is troubling that we, we do have an assessment, we have seven communities, we really don't have much of a say. We can say no, but the rest of them still agree, and well, we kind of have to deal and pay our assessment. So I figure this is the only chance we have to take a pound of flesh to ask a couple of questions like this. Yes, I know we have a, a membership on the school committee, and yes, we can go in that route, but hey, I don't have that, uh, I don't have that much bandwidth in my mind. So the question would be, frankly, what is the policy for use of E&D? That's one. Second component of that um, is compare and contrast in your, mind, in your mind's eye the difference between the stabilization and the E&D since both of them ser seem to serve the same fiscal policy. It just seems to be a bit of belt and suspenders, and that's just my take, not necessarily yours. Uh, and really, that's, uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. So, so to the, I guess to the latter question, the both both accounts, and I, we could certainly get you the the actual statutory information. So both accounts do offer the ability for the district to uh, to utilize money uh, for unexpected expenses. Um, not every regional school district has an E and D account that is uh, uh, that is a uh, that is at close to five percent. So in some respects, the the differences are not. The differences are not profound, I, as I said, I said, mentioned earlier. The stabilization, the use of stabilization money, would be for a specific, a specific purpose. When Jim scrubs down the budget at the end of the year, uh, that's really a time for, on an on an annual basis, to see how the operating budget has worked. If there were if there were overruns in certain budgetary areas, it would very likely lead to <coughs> us not being able to certify as high of an E and D number. So the E and D number if I can put it this way, the E&D amount is influenced by how successful we are in running the overall operational budget. If for some reason I needed to, uh, I needed to secure a couple of special education teachers because of uh, IEP requirements and it went beyond the scope of where the budget uh, was, was projected to go, when we, when we look at all the, the pluses and the minuses, it could end up that the E and D account at the end of the year might be further under the five percent ceiling. The stabilization fund would not be influenced by that at all. No, so I, 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 I think the imagery is. I think I, I understand your your perspective. To, to, but, but I guess here and there, if if we were to look at the balance sheet comparison for the last five years, are we going to show a deficit in any of those five years as contribution to your E and D? Right, because it's going to grow. It's going to grow to what your statutory limit is going to be. The maximum is going to be as five five percent. Of the previous years, so yes. you had 562 last year. The met you only contributed 99,000, so it was 463. So the year before that was what number? And the reason why I ask that is, when do you run a deficit? When, when are you not contributing to the E and D? And further, um, what are the requirements for use and access to the E and D? Once the money's there, how do you get the money out? And the reasons why I'm asking the differences with the stabilization, just sure. Here, here's the meat and potatoes. I think there's more control over the E and D when you have to ask for permission to use it. Whereas with the stabilization, you don't. The stabilization is just solely under your domain, and maybe I have that wrong. Uh, that's okay. I can clarify just one point. Both accounts require a two-thirds vote of the regional school committee. So in, ni in neither case is it a back to the municipality, uh, ba back to the sending towns. If we, were coming, if we were going to borrow money, there's an example of something that uh, if we're going to borrow money, we are voting it at the school committee level. We are sending a notice to the towns and the towns have 45 days to uh, call a meeting, uh, a special town meeting to take action. And if we don't have a unanimous, if any one town took an adverse action on a debt service item, we wouldn't be able to borrow. The e and, both E&D and stabilization are locally controlled, that is by, their, by the, regional school, uh, the regional school committee. Uh, with, so a two-thirds vote would require, we need a two-thirds vote in order to use those funds, in, in respectively. And I think that with the the E and D, the way it worked is we had a surplus last year of $99,000. And at that point, that's when the school committee decided to take that ninety nine and give 50, 54000 back to the towns and to put $25,000 into the OPEP account. So we might have only put in, you know, twenty five thirty dollars from over last year's numbers. So once we have the surplus through the end of the year, um, then the school committee makes a decision on what, you know, what to do with that surplus. And um, OPEP is an actuarial-based thing for... Uh, you know, post-retirement benefits that you talk to an actuary, our responsibility is, you know, 14 gazillion dollars. And we've 
have four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars uh, right. stuck away into our into our savings, and that's something that every town is dealing with with all these um, these benefits. Um, but what but what ends up happening? You ask at what point would there be a def deficit? Just like with every town, I guess Abington's waiting until June to have their town meeting because of a lot of variables that aren't known yet. Same thing happens here. We have we get our chapter seventy-eight num our number from the state. I mean, in prior years there has been problems with that number where the budget's gone forward and the number hasn't hit what the chapter 70 number was so um, I believe it was a transfer of um, a couple of years ago of um, yeah, from the E and D to, to supplement the budget because the, the state money was there was a shortfall there so it does fluctuate and I can get you the five-year comparison yeah it just, for, it um, just, just be a little more for the balance sheet so we'll get our arms around it absolutely as, as I mentioned I think regional school district districts and specifically yours becomes the envy of many Right, because you, you do have a good structure of your buses. You provide transportation to no-cost teacher students. You, you, you were able to provide new equipment and good hands-on learning education and opportunities. And that, that does indeed become, like, geez, I want that. Um, and I think that does apportion our cash, right? So the Chapter 70 money that you speak of are also a portion of the Chapter 70 monies that we likely could have had if there was no school district. Right. So I think it's important for at least me every year just to be able to say, geez, I'm getting taxed out the wazoo. I want to understand where all that money's going. Is that a fair question? And as as you guys are dealing with the the finance committee and the recommendations for all the boards here in town, and I spent five years on on your side of the table, back in the '90s, um, I appreciate that you know with with Rick Lafond and everybody trying to manage their existing budgets, we're doing the same over there with our 11.7 million dollar budget to try to figure out where we can save money and cost savings and not, you know, again, hopefully a reserve and then give the money back to the town, but like everything else, there's you know snow removal this year is going to you know we don't have the ability of having the money come out of our cherry sheet next year. We we have to pay for it this year in our, in our budget. There's no um, mechanism for us to overspend and then go back to the state and let them deal with it next year. We have to pay for that this year out of our budget. Um, and we're trying to identify <coughs> costs. You know where else can we save money? Because the fact that it costs us a lot of money to shovel our roof and and, and all that sort of stuff. So. Are you done? I am, thank you. Um, it just occurred to me, um, sometimes we can apply or request money for, um, <clears throat> because it was a state of emergency, or uh, is that something that you're able to do? I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll apply for anything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just I, curious, I, but is that something that you're able to do? I mean, my, my inclination is to say that if we're, if in many respects we're treated as a, as a distinct municipality, that that there's a, there's a possibility, but I, I haven't seen anything. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't think regional school districts can. No. It's because while, while you're like treated, how the, the you're treated from a financial vantage point, but I don't think you qualify under both federal and state statutes, right? Because we yeah. declare a disaster, area, they get reimbursed by the, um, the feds, and they have to divvy it up to the municipality within a certain county. Right. So you guys, unfortunately, it's worth a phone shot. call, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. it is worth the town <laughs> that they're in, right. the physical town that they're in. Yeah, we no, already don't, don't have a tax base, so they're wrong. Right. My question. Thank you. Nice thought, Barbara. <laughs> okay. Last chance. No, you get uh, get most of the questions. To actually, uh, the excess and deficiency would have been uh, on my list of things to ask about. The info that <coughs> excuse me, the info that Sean had requested. If you could send that um, through me, and then I'll send it out to the committee. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations, by the way, on your uh, school building. That was actually for your for your uh, boiler piece. That was that was pretty swift. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Chad, do you have everybody here tonight? Are you missing anybody? Uh, we are missing two people tonight. Um, Matt and Mike. And, uh, Mike. Yep. Rebecca. And Rebecca, we're missing three. Three seat, Do we even have a quorum? If you don't, I can make copies. Are you sure? I don't want to make copies. Let's see. Minus three. I am out here. Did you need to go to the last I did. In drafting. Go figure. Proud graduate of the drafting program. That's. Tom was Mr. Hickey when I was there. He's an English teacher. I still struggle with calling him Tom. Only master the math. 
both of you. I was pretty good at math when I was there. Oh, thank you. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. So is that what you do for a living? Uh, I went to work. That's, that's hard. That's all right. I keep forgetting. This line's not secure. <laughs> We have a moment of silence. I'm waiting. Anybody need a quick break? No. No. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. We need Rick. We need Leanne. Yes. I have a liaison report to say I have nothing to report. Great. Thank you. And they all do the same. I would be reporting the same. Hey, come on up. You don't want to come up? Hi, oh, yeah. <laughs> then once Rick is back, we will get started. A loud voice down, okay? <laughs> what? Louder. If I'm spoken to, I'll use a loud voice. Yeah, all the time I can't hear you. Court. I can't hear you at this end of the table. <laughs> that was a hard test. I want to let you know that. Oh, please. <laughs> I, did, I, I actually had to do the municipality one and the state boards and commissions, and the oh. um, they asked literally the same questions, less, less. Instead of your committee, your board or commission, your board, everything is the same. And it's the same test as last year too, I think. And I sent a note to the uh, little email saying, "Geez, you know you have a flaw in your website because when I, it wouldn't print on my Mac." Because your Mac. Well, if it's truly, and then when I when I actually hit back, it gave I me a blank certificate. Yep. I'm like, well, right. that's, a, that's <laughs> pretty silly. That's, that's, that's unethical. Low 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 to sign off on it <laughs> yourself. You yeah. can make your own. I There's a lot of flaws in that. And Ms. Adams sent to me a nice note saying, geez, I like receiving your emails, and I wasn't yeah. certain. I wasn't certain. Hey, Rick. How's it going? Come on up. If you have a chair. So the next thing on the agenda is a reserve fund transfer request. I have a reserve fund transfer request for $16,278. What's this all about? This we make it sound uh, like that. This is to get the election budget through the fiscal year. Um, you may recall that you passed the transfer for the purposes of the special election, uh, but you did not uh, transfer enough uh, to offset the costs. Of the company. You basically netted what was left in the, in the uh, left in the budget versus what would be necessary. Uh, because until the election, you didn't know. Um, let me back that up. You funded a town meeting. The town meeting approved an election, and the election was paid for through the budget. But the budget, w w last, last fiscal year, when we went through this, or last uh, f uh, spring, it was not intended to fund an extra election. But when you made the transfer for the special town meeting, you did not transfer the funds for the special election because you didn't know it would be necessary until after the vote at the, at, at the town meeting. So what is necessary now is to actually fund the elections budget to get us through the normal election, town election in April. And I know there was a, a number of people that were concerned that, well, why didn't we just piggyback that election into a dual election in the fall as opposed to having a special election, but that's that's neither my call nor your call. That's a vote of the Board of Selectmen, so. And I know that was one of your concerns, Chad. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> oh, many concerns, Rick. <laughs> that was certainly was one of the yeah. concerns. Um, and I understand the process that the Selectmen set the election dates. Mm -hmm. M my other concern is that we funded the April elections. We funded that when we went through the budget last year. We didn't fund the right. elections that have already happened. Correct. So, in effect, you the the budget that was intended for this coming annual regular election was utilized for the special election. That's that's correct. If, why didn't we take care of this before that? Be, well, you before what? Before the election. Well, you could have, but again, keep in mind when we came to you for a sp again for a uh, reserve fund transfer for the town meeting requirements that the town clerk and her staff had for registration, etc. We didn't know that we were going to need an election, right? Because in the town meeting may could have turned down the request. So, 
the only other opportunity to get money into this budget subsequent to that is through the reserve fund transfer. But, but between the town meeting and the election, there was I don't know, a month or a month and a half or two months. There was some time. We met. That's true. Well, I mean, it's true. that We could have come back to you at that point seeking a reserve fund transfer. That, that could, have, could have happened. Struggle. But there, was, but there was, there were enough funds in the election budget to handle that at the time. So it would have been premature because the, the budget did not need supplement at that time. We knew it would eventually. We knew that it would. Um, so. Questions? I guess to mirror some of Chad's concerns was that we did have enough time between September and the election to have this come to us. And we anticipated it because I believe we were told at one meeting we were going to be asked to do that. And now we chose to take money from a budget, knowing we had this election, and pay for something. So we had it budgeted. And I guess I'm going to back up a little bit. In the five years that I've been on this board, we've always taken the stand that it's either an emergency or an unanticipated expense that needed to be reserved fund transferred. I don't see what the emergency is here because we knew we have this election coming up in April. And it's not an unanticipated expense because we budgeted for this election in April. The unanticipated expense would have been the special election. So looking at it this way, I, I don't understand, you know, I, get, I guess I want some clarification as to why this is being brought to us now, like Chad said, and what's the unanticipated expense we knew. It's like me having $5,000 in an account knowing I have to pay my taxes, but I choose to go use it for something else, and then all of a sudden, my taxes are here, and it's like. I can't answer for your feelings, but I think it's a matter of form over substance to some extent here, because to come to the finance committee, and I'm speaking for for um, the town clerk, but we did, we were in cahoots, um, um, and ask you to transfer money into a budget that did not need it at that time. Um, because it's not like you would put it in a separate, you can't create a separate line item for a special election. You would have, you would put it into the same exact line item that had plenty of funds to fund the election that was necessary subsequent to the town meeting. So, like I say, I, and, and I, I can't imagine that anybody, and you know, that there's, and there's certainly no bad faith because everybody anticipated and knew that that line item for our elections couldn't handle two elections that at some point there was going to have to be some transfer to fund the regular election if the funds were utilized elsewhere. So, But it was used for a perfectly legal purpose. It was used for an election. It wasn't used for, um, for something that wasn't related to appropriate activities. So I don't, I mean, I, I can appreciate your concerns, but it's a little bit unorthodox to come looking for money to transfer into a line item that has plenty of funds for the time being. I think maybe <clears throat> the not having a fall town meeting kind of um, caused things to, you know, because had we had a fall town meeting, it could have been a that would have been something that we yeah. would have probably looked at going over the end of the, you know, how we do talk about the budget and and what the town meeting is going to be about and what the um, uh, articles are and you know so I think probably not having the fall town meeting hurt us in that area as far as the passing of information I think not coming before us before the election hurt in the passing of the information I just we I'm, I'm, I was stunned then I'm stunned now I, I you know we were we approved the special town meeting and we're told then that we we're going to be asked to approve a reserve fund transfer for that election we all know that the April election was in that budget I mean it's that's that was the that was for the elections that were in the budget when the budget was done and there were questions that were starting to get asked on why we couldn't do combine the elections and then all of a sudden we never needed to talk about this and it's it's done at this point I just 
uh, it feel like uh, we weren't given the opportunity to speak on it prior to it happening. And, and our role is to ask those questions, and, and we weren't given that opportunity. And, and at this point, it's done, and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> that is a, I, I would agree with your assessment. Certainly in the future, I'm more than happy to consult more closely with you on, on some of these issues. Um, but I do have to go back to the reality that asking for a transfer for an election that may not ever happen, I think a lot of people would have had an issue with that too. So I, I don't know that there's an answer. I, I can appreciate opinions, but I don't know that there's a, there's not, I don't think there's a right answer. I think it really is a matter of, of preference as opposed to, there's certainly no bad faith. There's certainly nothing that's not appropriate and consistent with general law. I don't think that's the issue. I, I, I do think to the extent that people have opinions on how this should have been handled, I think a whole other question, if there was one election, if this was combined, that, that becomes a significant question for the town clerk had it happened to run a dual election with two separate ballots. And there's an expense with regard to that. It's not as much as holding a totally separate election, but there's also a management and oversight burden that the town clerk has essentially running a dual election. Um, you know, we didn't get to that point, and obviously it's not worth beating up tonight, but it, 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 that would have been an issue, an additional operational issue, so, too, so. We did discuss that, though. Who's we? We discussed it at the selectmen's meeting. Okay, fair enough. I'll defer to your memory on <coughs> question about it but uh, I don't think it was just may because not have been discussed with the finance committee asked. though that's that's yeah nothing about the election was discussed with us yeah. I just, just two pieces I, I think it's it's I um, I acquiesce there's nothing that I could say except for an opinion so this is just fundamental fact and for my my uh, my role on the board I understand the context and concept of all of it frankly both sides I don't agree with one side. I'm just being frank. I, I agree with the chairman that there should have been an opportunity for discussion. I don't believe that would have actually predisposed the outcome. Because the selectmen reserve the sole and express right to set that date. And I agree with that. I just think that it would have been better to have this discussion in advance versus the notion of let's do it and say sorry because it's, it's easier than asking for permission. That, that's just the sense of it, and I don't. I mean, I'm not going to dwell on that forever, but I just that is the general sense of it. And that's really all my, my two cents, or five cents. I'll let you guys only three. Yeah. <laughs> In fairness, though, it would be hard for anybody to argue that when we came to you for a reserve fund transfer for the election for the town meeting, that people did not know that there was going to have to be additional funding at some point for an election. Everyone knew that. That was, uh, but you know, to the extent that you wanted to have further conversations about the election itself, the when, the how, I can completely appreciate that. And, and how the money's being spent. I know when we went through the special town meeting, there was the the original request for the reserve fund transfer was double what what the end result ended up being for the reserve fund transfer. And I feel that our input on, on that was, was we didn't have that opportunity on that. Um, Fair enough, yeah. It is what it is. There's, there's a request for a reserve fund transfer. Is there any? Anybody? What's the amount? The amount is $16,278. It goes to two accounts. 7640 goes to election salaries. 8638 is election expense. I'll make a motion to approve it for discussion. We'll make a vote for approval. Second. I have a discussion. Please. Discussion. What motion. happens if we say no? Great question. <laughs> I think they have to find it within their budget. There isn't any I? budget, though. That's what I'm saying. I, it, he was. It's, if if, oh, if we a, said no. That, I guess the question. Come to you. So I'll look at you. The question is going to be: Is do you have an interdepartmental budget transfer that you can do at the end of the year since it doesn't hit that threshold? You're only looking to fund a smaller portion, 16 grand. If w if we were to have a town meeting prior to the election, we could find an opportunity for a, for a, to ask the town meeting for an interdepartmental transfer. But we don't have that ability, you know, legal ability between now and the election. So. Um, 
So it's not a matter of having six, finding the 16,000. It's a matter of having a, me a mechanism to get it where it needs to be. I see. And this is the only mechanism to get it where it needs to be um, at the moment, so before the election. What if the vote isn't, though? I mean, that's a good question. I, I, uh, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a town council question, I think, because uh, we're obligated to hold an election, but uh, there's no uh, authorization in general laws to overexpend an election budget. So um, that would be rather interesting. I would have to follow up with, uh, with an opinion on that. I don't, uh, don't have a good answer. I, I guess my question is, yeah, we'd have to fund it, but again, I'm, I'm wondering, and, and I just go back to the way the boards always talk about it. What's our unanticipated expense for this for this election? What is our unanticipated expense? Okay. We had the money. You know, I, I guess I agree with Cindy with that. With that, so, so that's I something that we've always we've always taken our vote on an emergency, and I don't find that this is an emergency because we could have done it before. We had the money. That we could have done it for that election, and that kind of circumvented us as a group, and we've always taken it for unanticipated expenses, not unanticipated. So, so, be for so um, and that's the just my, discussion. and I just don't want to set a precedent for something like this to happen again. That maybe somebody else comes to us, and then they find it in their budget that they've moved or they've changed stuff, and then come and not use. The line items properly, thinking that you know, well, they've done it once, we'll do it again. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that I agree, Cindy, actually wholeheartedly with what you just described, and that really has been at least my take every time we're faced with these, and, and I share your point of view. I, I wonder if it makes more sensible for us to take no action tonight, pending the information that uh, the town manager gets from town council as to what happens. I think we could all agree as a group like that we're not, we're not interested in expending more money than what the transfer is just to satisfy or solve an issue. That would be, you know, pennywise pound foolish. Mm -hmm. But I think it's equally important for us. I, I don't think we have enough information to take an action on. And so to that end, um, I, I'm going to withdraw my motion. And, I, and I'm happy to get that information to you. Um, um, if you don't mind, my own opinion is that in good faith, we came to you to fund a town meeting, not knowing if an election was even going to be necessary. Uh, we did not even know that we were going to have a town meeting, technically, but we obviously presumed that the school project had gone to a certain point. Um, this is an extraordinary circumstance. You know, none of us were around when the town built its, its school buildings. Um, and I think it's a everything was done in nothing but good faith we could i think one of the options that we came to that, that we discussed at least was a reserve fund transfer for both in uh, the town meeting and the election but once again to ask for a funding of an election that may never happen would have been putting money in a line item that didn't need it so um, i think everybody completely understood what was going to be necessary prior to this coming regular town election um, you know, and clearly to the extent that people have issues with, with the, uh, you know, not having a say or a discussion about the form of the election, when the election was going to be held, and, you know, that's, that's obviously, you know, I certainly respect people's opinions on that, but everything here was done completely in public, in good faith, and I don't think there was any misunderstanding as to what was going to be necessary prior to this coming annual election. My understanding after we voted on the special town meeting was that we were going to be asked for a reserve fund transfer for the elections. And I think that the minutes probably reflect that. I haven't researched it to see if they do. And I think that the recordings would reflect that of the meeting. That we would be after the election, after the meeting, prior to the election, we're going to be asked prior for Prior to the special election. Yeah. Okay. Well, That's my understanding. Yeah. And my memory's foggy, but you, you have a memory, great recording you, secretary who probably, probably has a document. memory's probably clearer than mine on that point, but. I remember um, the same thing. Yeah. Because I, I, I tossed and turned for many nights over why we couldn't do it. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting for that opportunity to ask why we couldn't combine it. That was that was a but burning even that, question. For but me. even that would have been after the fact, though, in fairness. No, that would have been prior that, to the election. After the well, that's that's a good point. That would have been after the town meeting. But yep. fair enough, fair enough. And I think that that my conscience when I voted on the town meeting was to get it to that next step, and we would take them step by step. And that yeah. second step just didn't happen. 
but so so there was a motion that's been withdrawn. Right. I think there is the further question. I'm happy to get you the information that you, that you seek. Second. Yes. Thank you. And um, and obviously, the timing of the funding is not imminent. How imminent is it, in your opinion? I mean, the finance committee is certainly going to meet before the election. Anyway. I'm planning that we'll be here so, next week. So, so we will, I have a so few we'll, bills that need to be paid. Fair enough. So okay. I will get you the information within a day or two. And there's, an, there's payroll and as to the well. Town clerk, so. That's so I have right. well, you ask. I have a few accounts that are in the right. negative right now, and but, I don't like that. that but that's that's again that'll that's all subject to the answer to the the, the burning question. Which we're, 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 I'm planning to meet Wednesday if we if the rest of the committee would like we could meet earlier, but Wednesday uh, we have water department. I need to confirm with them. I think that's the remaining budget that we haven't reviewed. So we can take this up again then. Can I just ask when we come back, can we have a breakdown of what the expenses were? I know salaries, that's got to be for the people that run the polls, right. but the expenses, is that like probably printing of ballots? Does that yeah, include? Sure. Does that include like the police? Is that under expense or is that under salary and, and things like that? The police would be under um, salaries. Okay. So it would be 8000 just to have, if we were able to do it in one time, in November, it would have been an extra eight thousand. We would have saved this. We yeah, would have saved all of the salaries. Not all of it, but a good chunk goes so to the police. But we would have been able to save that. Had we had one election, we would have saved all of the salary line item because they would have been there for police, and they would have been there, like the poll workers. We would have saved their yeah. salary, Some and we would have salary. right, and yeah. we would have saved the police salary. So the only expenses we would have had, had we combined. The election would be what printing of the ballots and maybe like however the machines have have to be calibrated or whatever. So if I can get that piece as to how much, just that piece would be. Okay. Thank you. Would you have needed additional staffing um, at each precinct? We would, have, we would have required two books, but depending on who the workers were, they could have. Okay. It's however the workers can handle the books. Yeah. The biggest expense would be the police. So the money that was in the budget that would have had this election not happened gone for the, the upcoming election. Yes. So that wasn't even that money hasn't even covered all of this expense yet. Is that that right? So that money can't that just isn't that being applied to this? So we, we had funded I'm not, I'm not following the question yet. So that there's money we have an election coming up in April, which would have been out of this budget. Mm -hmm. Where's that money? Well that's the money that paid for the special election. That's where I'm negative. That's so, but that wasn't even enough to cover everything from it. So that's what these things that need to be paid still. No, these are these are these are uh, red like uh, uh, costs associated with the coming annual election, printing of ballots. So this is the upcoming review. election. Yes, this, okay. these are all related to the upcoming. So these are new exp. No. These are accruals. These are yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I was asking if they were accruals. They um. Okay. These aren't outstanding bills from the last special election. These are the, these are related <coughs> to the upcoming. In election. the salary, they are currently, yes. And what salaries would those be? Um, Who didn't get paid for the last election? Well, they're paid, but it's still negative. In my for my salary line item, it's negative. I I, I will let me. Uh, so if we could get, yeah. if we could dig into that some more because I want to understand are we are we funding. April and when was it? Uh, oh, yeah. it from the past election. October. October. You have to say it. I, I can't really see it. If the whole amount? No, no. Just, just how much do you roughly? Are you out? Do you roughly in this report I did um, the beginning of March about fourteen, about fourteen hundred for salaries from the last election. Well, from the time period, yes. Those employees have been paid, right? They have been okay. paid, yes, but it's leaving negative so in the paid. account. Yes. So if we could dig into those details. I, I then. will do that, yes, thank you. And, and, uh, and I will get you the information you seek from town council as to what options exist. I think that covers the reserve fund transfer until next week. Um, do you have any updates? I just want to give you a sense. Uh, you know, uh, early April, as uh, uh, you heard from Mr. Hickey, that the, we will have health insurance rates. Um, we are obviously getting a, a 
handle and hope our snow deficit doesn't uh, create further issues for the budget process. Uh, my goal would be within about two weeks to get some budget scenarios. I know pushing off town meeting obviously bought time, but um, depending on what those scenarios shape up to be, um, it's going to require time to work those out. So but my goal would be, you know, but within within two weeks or the end of the second week from now that, that uh, both that I'd be able to forward to the FinCom and selectmen uh, some scenarios that are plausible. So that's it. And that's, that's all I have other than what you've already asked for of me to get you tonight. I explore that. So next week is uh, if water confirms and the reserve fund transfer, and then if anything comes up between now and the agenda being posted. So you would like more of a breakdown of the um, salaries? Yeah, just on, on what what is what is the money going to? Right, because I have copies of everything that was already paid for as far as the ballots, the maintenance of the machine, things like that posted. I have well posted. I might need help with that receipt. Um, but it's the salaries. I have it already done because I did it beforehand in anticipation of, but yeah, more details together. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Liaison reports. Anyone? Anyone? Sean gave his earlier. Do you want to give your liaison report again? I would love to. <laughs> uh, there is none. Thank you. Oh, uh, pardon me. There are none. There, there are multiple. Are. Yeah. There are none. Right. We have review of minutes. We have minutes from March 11th. Everybody was here besides Barbara. Motion to acknowledge. <laughs> sorry, motion to acknowledge that Barbara wasn't here. Second. <laughs> <laughs> what a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second his. All right. So a motion and a second to approve the minutes from March 11th. Uh, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Afraid to make I just volunteer for something by not being at a meeting tonight. I just would like to catch the chairman for a few moments. Just right. we're going to wrap up in probably 30 seconds. Right. That's why I put the bug in your ear. I have no correspondence. I didn't check the mail. Do we have mail? Did no, that, was that was it. All right. And the next meeting is next week. Oh, please get your 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 certificates and your training you, and your ethics signal everything that Leanne has asked for and Sean has asked for please 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 get that done this week by Friday end of day Friday I, I just want to ask you a question about it. Mm -hmm. so that's it looking for a motion motion to adjourn second all those in favor opposed Thank you.